tonight, St. Louis, all around the world. Come on, you can do better than that. I said his name is Jesus. Wow, what a night. What a night. You can be seated at all the campuses. I'm so glad you came. You know, as you know, years ago, we only had church on Easter. And it was like God came to me one day and he's like, hey, listen, all the heathens go to church on Easter. The church ought to go to church on the day that I died for their sins. And that's what you have done today all around the world, even our online family. Would you give it up for our online family? Some of our... Sheldon and Nett, the jurors, the list goes on and on and on of people who are watching online from different places and spaces around the world. And I won't be long tonight, but I do want to talk to you just a little bit about the grace of God, the grace of God. Everybody shout it with me on all campuses, shout the grace of God. God's grace is unmerited favor. It's just, he just does it because we family, he loves you. When we receive Jesus, and this is why we got to talk to all of our unsaved friends this week, you know, real quick, because tomorrow I'll be in St. Louis preaching and all, streaming all the campuses this weekend, and you only have a little bit of time to text all your friends and let them know they better get to church so they don't go to hell. Can I get an amen? amen. I said, can I get an amen in the church? And it's, it, it, it's slow. It's, it, it's sometimes too slow, and we wait too long. I was thinking today about when Ashton uh, was 12, I was looking over, you know, I've done 19 of these Good Friday services. And sometimes I brief over some of my notes and I I took this note down. It said, Ashton came to me today, she's 12 years old, and um, she said, why do they call it Good Friday? She just asked the question. I thought, man, that's a great question because it's only good for us. But it certainly wasn't good for the man who's walking down the Via Della Rosa carrying his own cross, knowing that there's going to be a time that he's going to be hammered for our sins. In fact, we've got a series coming up, and I'm going to drill into it this weekend a little bit on my Easter sermon to try to get your friends who come to church to come back the following week, not just for baptisms, but to come back. To hear about the mental anguish that Jesus went through. It said that he sweat drops of blood. This is, this is, this, there's no Prozac, there's no Xanax, there's no hotline, there's no call a friend. He is alone there in that garden of Gethsemane knowing that tomorrow this is going to happen. He goes through and tries to tell his disciples, can't you tarry with me one hour? And they just couldn't do it. And we make fun of them and think, what a bunch of losers. But I guess the question would be today, did we do TikTok for an hour or do we pray for an hour? And I'm not going to ask for integrity check on this. Let's just move on. Can I get an amen on that? But Ashton said, why is it a good Friday? It's not a good Friday for Jesus, but it's a great, great Friday for us because when Jesus was nailed to the cross... His hands and his feet, our whole life completely changed. And we became adopted, engrafted in, sons and daughters of the Most High God. I want to pause there for a minute because that's got to let, let that sit in your spirit. You are a son and a daughter of the Most High God. And, and, and things change when, when you're a son and a daughter. Have you ever noticed that? You ever been out to eat and some kids are acting like a fool and you're like, you know what? The kid drive me crazy. Or you get on an airplane and you're like, oh God, not that two-year-old behind me. Raise your hand if you're like, no, 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 no. But if it's your kid or grandkid, I'm like, hey, everybody, <laughs> you're lucky to sit with us. And he may throw stuff and he may go crazy. We don't know what Liam's gonna do, but we family. Everybody shout, we're family. We're family. And things are different when you're engrafted in to the family. Now we know that Jesus had never sinned, yet he became sin. He paid a debt he did not owe. We owed a debt that we could never ever pay. And there's only one person that could justify this payment. The only person that's got the money in the bank, the only person that, that is spotless is the son of the living God. And Jesus now comes down of a virgin, spends 33 years in what we know is kind of a dumpster fire called earth, leads a spotless life and uses his life, listen to this church, to try to tell everybody else that they need to get into this 
family of God. Again, way different when it's family. I have a friend. I actually have more than one friend, if you believe it. But I have a friend from Florida in Polk County, businessman, and he, um, he called me about six months ago, and he was outraged because he has a small business, but yet at the same time, it's, it's a large business, and on his American Express, he spends $100,000 a month. They do corporately because he gets the points and so on. He pays the bill, and, and uh, somebody had went to Sam's and spent $13,000, and you might think, well, how could that happen? Uh, well, the Sam's were so used to so many purchases being done with his credit card that it just, it just went through, and he was so livid about it. He actually called me. He was just, just going crazy, and he called me and said, you know, this happened at $13,000 credit he said, I'm gonna, I am going to find out who they are and prosecute them to the fullest extent of the law. American Express is like, hey, it's not a big deal. You know, this happens. We're good. We don't want to lose you as a customer. And no, because he knew the sheriff and so on, he called them and he made them about, took them a couple weeks, but they, they made Sam's give him the footage. He wanted to be there at the police station. True story. When it happened, so he could prosecute. And when the big TV came through, and the couple of flat screens came through, and the, everything that they're ringing up, he looks, and as soon as he looks, it's his daughter. He's bound by drugs. And he said, my first, Inclination, as you might imagine, if you could spend $100,000 a month on your credit card, you're a pretty good quick thinker. If you spend $100,000 a month and, and you're not a quick thinker, you probably only do it for one month. Can I get amen? Right? <laughs> but he said he's such a quick thinker, he looked and thought immediately he wanted to say, yeah, I don't know who it is, but the poor girl, let's just leave it alone. But he said, because it was family and it was his daughter, he looked and he said, that's my daughter. And I owe those charges. And I will pay those charges. And then he got on the phone with his finance people and started coming to find out there was thousands of dollars per month that was being charged to this credit card that she had got a hold of and it was slipping through the cracks, but because it was family and her father had the means to pay the bill, he wasn't happy, but he paid the bill. And I, I didn't think about that story at all until on the way here I was driving and the Lord reminded me of that story that your father never even let it cross his mind for a second and go, I'm going to act like I don't know him. So, you know, this goes this way. No, Jesus knew what we were going to do and immediately said, they're my son, they're my daughter, and I'm going to blight and die on a cross and a rugged cross for their sins, for their sickness, for their shortcoming. Somebody ought to shout amen tonight. Your father loves him. You ought to just leave tonight and say, he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. How he loves us so. Your family. I know this guy. He's angry. He was going to prosecute that person to the fullest extent of the law until he found out it was his seed. We now, church, are the seeds of the son of the most high God in the earth realm and we're supposed to do what he did. Jesus wasn't held on the cross by nails. He was held on the cross by love. My friend didn't release his daughter's debt because he wasn't smart enough to outthink the cops, outthink the system. He just said, I'll take the punishment. Think about Jesus again, this woman who's bound in sin. She comes to Jesus and she's going to dip water out of a well. We know tonight we are literally drinking around, wherever you're watching around the world, you're drinking the washing of the water of the word right now. It's going to heal you, redeem you, set you free, change who you are. Let's never get so used to it. Oh, it's just Good Friday, so it's religious vibe. It's just Easter bunny. It's just Easter eggs. No, no, no. This is when Jesus died for us. 
And if it was just us, he would have died just for us, which is hard to believe. I can understand him died for a nation or or a bunch of people, but if it's just like me and you, then, you know, I I can't understand that. Raise raise your hand if you can't understand why he died for you. Raise your hand. I I don't get it because I know me. I'm going to give you one opportunity again to raise your hand at all campuses. (laughs) Knowing you, if the person didn't raise their hand next to you, you need to look at them and say, you might have a stroke. Be careful. Raise your own hand right now. (laughs) So all of God's pain and punishment that he allowed upon Jesus was because God was, is, and always be God. It wasn't that God didn't love us, it's just our sin separated us. By the way, my friend, that sin that his daughter had had done and started younger and the drug addiction separated them and then... It separated her from the father's love. And the good news is now through rehab and the love of God, the daughter and the father have been reunited and it's a beautiful thing. But the enemy will always try to separate you from your loving father, telling you that you're no good. Since you know, like myself, that we're no good, it's easy to believe. That we're not worthy, and since we know we're not worthy, it's really easy to believe. And we get to thinking about, and that's where we're going with that series starting in two weeks from now, we get to thinking about the wrong thing, and then now we're being crucified on a cross that Jesus actually was crucified on the cross for us. My friend's daughter, since the father paid, she didn't go back and say, well, I'm going to pay as well. Of course she did it. Because the father already paid. And secondly, she never could pay. Because she has no means of payment. You and I have no means of payment to make this thing between us and God right. There's no way. We just simply don't have that much money. We don't have that much church attendance. We don't have that, that kind of vocals. We can't jump that high. There's only one thing that can put us back together, and it's that family organism where God gave up his son so he could get sons and daughters together. Every campus ought to be shouting right now. And it put us back together. So the woman comes to the well. Jesus hasn't died yet on the cross and he starts up a conversation and I I wanna suggest you to start up conversations between now, tomorrow night and Sunday with your friends and you need to start up a conversation with text. You need to say, hey, whether you like it or not, you're going to church with me on Easter (laughs) or whatever your approach is, but you gotta have conversations. Jesus starts a conversation with a woman who is a notorious sinner. She's said by some, a prostitute. She's got all these different lovers and all these different problems and Jesus starts talking to her. Which I love the way Jesus has that philosophy that I'm gonna try to bring people close to me that are far from me rather than religious people always say you're not worthy and so stay away from God. That's the devil. If you ever hear stay away from God, it's the devil. Here's what he wants you to do. He said it in his word, right? He said, I wanna put a ring on your finger. I wanna put a robe on your back. I'm not mad at you. I'm madly in love with you. So mental anguish has to go when you realize this can't be my problem anymore because my dad already he paid the bill and by his stripes I am healed by his blood I am made whole this is what we sing at church come on somebody ought to give him praise today. comes to Jesus starts having a conversation she said I'm here because I'm thirsty Jesus is like I know you are he said but if you drink from this water this living water you will never thirst again. He knew, everybody shout, he knew. He knew knew what he was about to do. He knew that I'm gonna have to drag that rugged cross down a dirty road as they beat me, as they lacerate me, as they, they, they mock me, cuss me. My mom's gonna be crying. The disciples are gonna be crying. The whole world is coming apart, but this is something that I cannot, I can't back up on. I'm going to go all the way with this. 
talk about some mental torment. How many of you like myself and you've had some dark nights of the soul? Raise your hand. You're like, I've had some dark nights. I'm like, I had to knock myself out some way. Maybe it was 10 Tylenol PM for you. Maybe it was Jack and Coke for you. Maybe it was overdosing on Lunesta for you. I don't know what it was for you, but there's been times that people have had to just knock themselves out to try to get over what they were under. And Jesus is reflected with his disciples. He says, guys, hey, I'm not going to lie about it. I'm really stressing about this situation, and I need you to pray with me. Now, here's the thing. You know, we will never know. I love that song. It says, I'll never know how much it costs. I think we sang it tonight, right? To see my sins upon that cross. We'll never know. But he knows. And thank God we'll never know because he knows. But we do know what we do know, and we do know we've been through some stuff. Raise your hand if you have been through some stuff. And so we got to also know that our friends and our neighbors, I'm talking about the people that you work with, the people on your street, the person that you pass in the apartment complex, you have to do everything that you can to let them know this Easter is a turnaround, it's a change, because more than ever, people are scared, they're hopeless, they're, 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 they're losing hope, and they're fighting and, and bickering and screaming. And they need something to bring us together. And who is that something? His name is Jesus. Jesus. I love the song, you don't know it, but it goes, his name is Jesus. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. I, I love all songs about Jesus. How many of y'all like songs about Jesus? Yeah. Family. Jesus looks at her while all the people are accusing her. Jesus, who are you talking to? Meanwhile, Jesus is thinking about, I'm going to get nailed on a cross for your judgmental attitudes about what she did. And by the way, I know what you did. It says that Jesus began to write in the sand. Now, he hasn't died yet for our sins. But he starts writing in the sand. And some say, you know, I don't, I don't know what he's writing. I think that he was perhaps just writing as people were standing there, Bob and Bill, Motel 6, November the 3rd. I don't know what he was writing. But all I know is that they said when he looked up, all of his accusers were gone. Remember this story? Raise your hand on all campuses. You remember this story? They're all gone. Now, Satan is the accuser of the brethren. And he's always telling you, you're no good. You'll never make it. You don't deserve to go to church. And this is why you, pressure drives you. And we're going to talk about that tomorrow night and Sunday. How pressure drives you to mental anguish. And God doesn't want you under mental pressure. Pressure happens. But that accuser of the brethren now is the enemy. And if we can get to church and we can learn the word and we can realize that, guess what? We are family and our father is not looking to prosecute us. When he sees the tape, he's actually saying, you know what? I'm actually gonna pay the whole debt. In fact, I'm gonna overpay the debt in case anything stupid happens again. So if they owe 13,000, I'm gonna just put 10 million in the account because his blood has reconciled us, redeemed us, renewed us, revived us, restored us. Somebody ought to out, amen. And now he's canceled out the debt that we owe. That ought to make you so excited. Wow. Colossians, let's go there. Colossians 2 verse 13. It says, you were dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature. Anybody got a sinful nature? If you didn't raise your hand, you're a liar. It was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive. One translation says he quickened you with Christ. And he forgave most all your sins. Let's try it again. All campuses. Come on, Weldon Ferguson. Why? He forgave why? All your sins. Sunset Hills, everybody. Why? RPC. What? And then I love verse 14. You're going to love verse 14. Check this out, guys. <laughs> he canceled the record that contained the charges that were against us. He took it away. 
and he nailed it to the cross. So what you did in 1982, he nailed it to the cross. What you did today, what you're going to do between now and Sunday, that you're, you're not going to know that you're going to do it. But traffic and pressure. Come on, somebody ought to help me right now. It was nailed to the cross. You ever been in a fight with a loved one and maybe it was you that brought it up, maybe it was them that brought it up, but they didn't fight fair. By that I mean they brought up some stuff that really we've already done all that arguing. Why are you bringing that up now? You don't, don't point at anybody, just do one of these. Come on, raise your hand and I'll cancel So you're familiar with what I'm talking about? Jesus will never, ever, 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 ever do that. He said that when I forgive your sins, he said, I canceled the record that contained the charge. He said, I destroyed it. So if you start talking about and say, God, you know, God, forgive me of this. It's the same thing that I did. 2016. You go. I don't. I don't know anything about 2016. You say, well, how is that possible? I don't know. I'm not God. I don't know how a, a brown cow eats green grass and gives me white milk, but I put some in my coffee as I was driving over here tonight. I don't know how my cell phone can send a text. Zoom, and go to my whole leadership team just a moment ago, and it hit all campuses live as I showed them backstage, telling them how proud I am. I don't know how it happens. I wish I did know how to undo a text when it went away and, and I didn't mean to send it. Come on, raise your hands. You wish you, you wish you knew how to blot out that record or cancel those charges. But he said he destroyed it. He nailed it to the cross. So what I'm asking you to do is if Jesus already took the penalty of your sins, he already suffered, bled, died, there's no sense in you paying and him paying. You need to admit it, quit it, and forget it, and move on. And said, it's been canceled. It's been been destroyed. Come on, somebody. Because the anointing has set me free. And let he who has been set free... It's free and deep. Come on, so and let the redeemed of the Lord say, I think our city ought to say so right now. Cancel it, cancel it. Okay, well, I got seven more minutes. I'll be out in seven minutes and 17 seconds, I promise you, because it's only an hour. He took it, he destroyed it, nailed it to the cross. Verse 15. In this way, he disarmed the evil rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross with Christ Jesus. Verse 16, don't let anyone condemn you. All campuses, let's read that together. What's that say? Don't let anyone condemn you. One more time, what's it say again? Don't let anyone condemn you. Florida, you don't understand this. St. Louis, like 70% of my church is Catholic because everybody in St. Louis is Catholic. So let's, let's read it in the Catholic way. So I'll, I'll read it to you the way. You. So don't let anyone condemn you. So let's go. Ready? Ready? Let's go. So don't let anyone condemn you. Shout it again. What? So don't let anyone condemn you. <laughs> Including you. Are you in anyone? If anyone be in Christ, he's a new creature. Well, you're in anyone. He said, don't let anyone condemn you. And I say that you are you, so stop allowing the enemy and the enemy to condemn you. You need to start texting everybody on the way home. <laughs> start telling them, Jesus has forgiven you. Send them like the, just like, this is a good one. Um, you could like Google, just I'm making this up right now. You could Google the bodyguard soundtrack with Whitney Houston, Yes, Jesus Loves Me, that's the best version that's ever been done in the history of the world, and just ship that to your friends. Zoop! I saw like an eight-year-old right now, she's like, bodyguard. She says, oh, yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, Jesus 
loves me. And she like this chord progression. It's like, do, 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 do. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me. And then it goes, and she goes, I'm pressing on. We didn't practice this. The upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Undeserving and stubborn will, but he never failed to. If you want to hear it right, just like I told you, Google bodyguard Whitney Houston, and you'll see. Wow, he botched that. But give it up for the band, because they did a great job. Shout, he loves me. Come on, shout like you mean it, shout, he loves me. So don't let anyone condemn you for what you eat, what you drink, for celebrating certain holidays and new men's ceremonies, Sabbaths. For these rules were only shadows of the real thing, Christ himself. Tomorrow, at our Saturday night services and all campuses on Sunday, we're going to talk about John 19, where it says, it is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up the ghost. When he said it is finished, he didn't say I am finished. He said sin's ability to diminish you and finish you has been finished because of me getting nailed on the cross. And I bled and I died and I went to hell and I suffered the full payment for your sin. And then I came back on the third day and resurrected myself. Now the same power that I have, you now have. You missed your opportunity to shout hallelujah. I know I'm singing a lot tonight, but there's an old song if you're really old. I don't even know who's singing, but it's a reunited and it feels so good. Come on, somebody. Reunited and we got Big up we had, I don't know the word. It was like 1980, you know, and you were a couple of skating. And it goes back to reunited. Yeah, y'all buck wild. <laughs> when Jesus did what he did, what Adam and Eve did in the garden to disunite us, dislocate us, dismember us, Jesus reunites us all at one time. And that's why hell's been fighting you so hard. That's why the enemy has fought you so hard. You can't even believe this stuff we, my family's been through in the last 48 hours. I don't even, I don't tell you my sad stories, but boy, do I ever have them. But all it makes our family do is go, <laughs> we must be on the right track, Jack. There must be thousands of your old friends and family members about to call you tomorrow and say, I'm ready to go to church. I'm ready to go to rehab. I'm ready to get delivered. I'm ready to get set free. Come on, somebody. So since Jesus paid it all, we need to go ahead and say it, spray it, wheel it, deal it. Somebody ought to shout amen and make them feel it. Tell everybody everywhere, guess what? Death has lost its victory. It's been swallowed up with Jesus' blood. Stand up with me because we have one minute and 19 seconds. Told you we'd get out of here in an hour. We will. It's important that you realize <laughs> how much you're loved. I don't think you know, because I know I don't know how much I'm loved by the Lord. Because I can't possibly imagine it. But I do know some things that I do know I love. Like, I, I love my wife. I mean, I love her. I mean, I, I was with her today. And, she was on the motorcycle behind me and just we're driving down the road and I pat her leg up. I mean, I love her. I, I tattooed her name on my arm. I mean, tattoo on heart for tattoo on arm. I love her. And I know that I love my daughter there. You know, I don't know what campus she's even singing at tonight. We got a lot of churches and actually on our way past the back in the stage, they had like, like, like nine or 10 pizza boxes. And I, I looked at my daughter law as I walked past and I said, you yeah, know, we got more churches than pizza boxes. 
So I don't know where she's at, but I, I, I know this. <laughs> oh, dude, I love Ashton Crank. She texted me yesterday because I did an Instagram and I had her shirt on. <laughs> she said, you must miss me really bad. And I said, you have no idea. The fact is, I was down in the basement and they needed to leave quick. And I ran into her closet and got it, but, <laughs> but I did miss her really bad. But God has no stepchildren. He just got you. And no matter how far you went from Jesus, and we all have. As I, as, I, as I close, how many got some stuff you really don't ever want anybody to know about? Raise your hand about it, or God might tell me right now what it is. I don't really want to talk about that. And Jesus knew about it before you did it and said, how much is that going to cost? There's the number. Put a squazillion times more in the bank to cover the cost. It said that his grace is sufficient for our weakness. So here's the great news as we close. God created you and he loved you and he picked you and you don't know how much you're loved but he knows how much he loved you and so all you can do is just trust that he loves you and you ever sometimes though like you're married to somebody or your kids or whatever you know they love you but some days you feel you really do feel like I feel like they really love me today anybody ever say I'm feeling it they never had day you ever had days and you think do they really love me? Raise your hand. I don't, I don't feel love. I don't know if it's he motions, she motions, but I, I just want to know I'm not alone. Raise your hand. All can I don't feel, I don't feel the love. I want to suggest to you, don't go by what you feel. Go by your faith that he loves you, that he gave himself for you, that he died on that cross. Even if you, you couldn't make it to church tonight and he tries to, to make you feel bad, you need to make darkness tremble. I said, you know what? I trust his love. I trust his grace. And like the woman at the well, I'm going to drink of that water and I'm never going to thirst again because Jesus makes the darkness tremble in every area of our life. If you believe it, shout amen.